Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. I thank the Lord myself today. Can you give me just a little bit? Thank the Lord for his blessings and the opportunity to be in his presence one more time. Solomon said that a living dog is greater than a dead lion. The reason why he said that is because a lion is the king of the jungle. Who's tougher than the lion? And yet, when he's dead, that's it. But even a dog, when he's still alive, still have an opportunity to do something. And so I'm grateful. I'm not, I'm not considering myself a lion or a dog. I'm considering myself blessed to have another day to serve the Lord. Another day for God to help me get this thing right. I want to make it to heaven. I certainly don't want to miss out on all that God has for me. Amen. Amen. And so I'm just grateful today for everything that God has done for me, all the ways he has moved in my life. Even when I didn't understand, I know God was doing the right thing for me. And I appreciate that. Also, I'm grateful today for all those that are out with us this morning, visiting and, and, uh, I, I, I just, I am grateful. You know, uh, I say this all the time. I don't want to preach to me. And as much as I love her, I don't want to preach to just my wife either. I think she would tell you that I do that more often than I need to anyhow. So if you would open your Bibles with me. I don't know if anyone else had... Uh, a good Christmas, but uh, we certainly did. Yeah. Got to sit home sick all day, and, and sometimes, sometimes that's a, a good thing. You get to lay down and do nothing. That's it. That's it. Guilt, guilt-free break. Guilt-free. Yes, in the book of Saint Mark, chapter number eight. And starting at verse number 31. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed after three days rise again. And he spake that saying openly. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him. But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For it shall, or for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. I just want to stop there for a moment and bring out just two things First, let me just say that I'd like to speak from the subject of, Lord, help me to love you. I think a lot of folks think they love the Lord, but they really don't. 
there's a couple of things here that jumped out. They're just a quick sidebar. And the first thing was the fact that Peter rebuked Jesus and then Jesus turned around and rebuked him. Yeah. The second thing is the fact that he says he's putting here without really giving a number the value of your soul. What does it profit you if you gain the whole world and still lose your soul? That means your soul is more valuable than everything this world has to offer. If you owned it all, it's still not as valuable as your soul. It's a bad trade. It's a bad deal. But that's not the core. I just wanted to bring that out because I think those are two very important things. I know there's times when people feel like they are doing God a service. We will rebuke the Lord. And I know no one here has ever done anything like that. No one here is has never said, never told the Lord, I don't know why you're doing this to me. I don't know what I've done to deserve this. No. None, none of us have done that. And that's why I'm so thankful this morning that I'm preaching to other folks no. that's not even here. Peter thinks that he loves God. He thinks he loves Jesus. Mm -hmm. And in an attempt to prove to Jesus how much he loves him, he tells him that I'm not going to let you suffer. I'm not going to let you go through the things that you said that's about to happen. I'm not going to let you suffer many things. I'm not going to let you be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and the scribes. I'm not going to let you be killed. What he didn't realize was in the effort that he was trying to do and to demonstrate his love for God, he was undoing the plan of God. Because had Jesus not gone through those things, we today would not be able to say that we can be resurrected because Jesus was resurrected. He tells Peter this. He tells him that he doesn't savor the things of God, but you savor the things of men. Now I'm paraphrasing it. I know he doesn't word it exactly like that, but that's what he's telling him. You And the word savor means an intense desire or an intense yeah. interest in something. It's what we would call today being obsessed yeah. with something. Yeah. Yeah. To have an affection for something. Come on. We say, we say we love our children. Come on. The Bible says, he that spared the rod hateth his son. That's what it says in the book of Proverbs. We say, I love my child. That's why I don't correct him. And so your definition of love doesn't line up with God's definition of love. Sometimes our minds are just messed up when it comes down to not just the things of God, but what truth really is. We will say that we love somebody and then turn around and beat on them. That ain't love. I had a woman tell me one time that she knew her husband didn't love her because he don't ever hit her when she does wrong. That's not love. That's man. That's somebody's idea of what love is, but it's not what the Bible says love is. Yes, sir. The Bible defines itself. He says that love is kind, love is gentle, love is patient. patient. Amen, anybody? Amen. That's what he says love is. 
That's what the Bible says love is. You can read it. It gives you a whole list of things. And if what you say your love is and the way you demonstrate love doesn't line up with that, then it's not really love. It's just your idea of love. And I said all that because I think there are times when we have come up with our own definition of how we love God. And the way I know I love God is because I do this. Jesus said, if you love me, be faithful to church. If you love me, pay your tithes and offerings. No, that's not what he said. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you say that you love me, then do what I have asked you to do. So you can't run out in the streets and do what you want to do and then come back and say, I love the Lord. Yes, Lord. That, then, your, then your idea, there's only two things that's taking place there. Either your idea of your love for God is wrong or you just lying. And I'll let the person that says it and does wrong pick their own, but it can only be that. Yeah. You either lying about you love God or you don't understand how to love God. And I think that's really important for us to understand how to love him. It's easy to say that I love the Lord and I'm going to do what he says. Well, what does he say? What he says may not be the same for you as it is for me. Now, there's some fundamental truths. There are some things that just are not going to change. I have to clear this up because... I don't want anybody walking out of here thinking that it's okay for you to do something that nobody else can do. Amen. That's not what I'm saying. Amen. I'm saying God has God has a level. Yes, he does. If you want to make it to heaven, this is holy. Yeah. Yeah. You got to come up to that. That's right. Now, if you add a little something more to it, you've gone above what I've asked. You know, it's possible to go above and beyond what somebody asks you for yeah. to show your love for them. Amen. My, my, and I'm just going to use this as an example. I, I hope y'all don't get tired of this. I, I use me and my wife so that I don't get pulled off to the side after service and told, uh, that, nah, I, I don't know, you embarrass me. Yeah. I don't want all that. I, I tell on my own self. Yeah. My wife told me one time, well, if you loved me, you would get me flowers sometimes. Yeah. You don't never buy me nothing. Yeah. So I went and got her flowers once. Come on. One time to show my love. That's it. And it wasn't too long. She said, yeah, but that was two years ago. <laughs> well, I do love my wife. So here's what I did. I went down to the flower shop. I gave him my credit card number and I said, every two weeks, I want you to make up something nice and have it delivered to my wife on her job. Now, she didn't ask for that. That's going beyond. Give me just a moment. <laughs> you know. I, I, I did that because I know that I have a bad memory. I forget things. I get so wrapped up in other stuff that I'm not thinking. And I'm like, you know what, though? But I want my wife to know I love her, so I'm going to do a little extra. And so if the Lord says that I want you to come to three, ain't nothing wrong with you saying maybe three is okay with you, but I want to give you four. And I'm trying to do five. Ain't nothing wrong with that. If he said pray 10 minutes, ain't nothing wrong with you praying for 15. Amen. But don't come up and have prayed five and say that you've done all right. Mm. All right. I'm, I'm going to leave that alone. Thank you, Lord. Right. Peter's mind, Peter's idea of his love was demonstrating 
the fact of his love by being violent. Jesus told him and the other 12, I'm going to suffer. They're going to come and get me. They're going to beat me. They're going to abuse me. They're going to turn their backs on me. And I'm going to die. Peter tells him, I'm not going to let that happen. And Jesus said, rebuked him and said, rebuke you, Satan. You don't love the things of God. Now, you would think that that's enough right there to make the man straighten up. Yeah. Yet when they're in the Garden of Gethsemane yeah. and the soldiers come to get Jesus, Malchus comes up and he's getting ready to grab Jesus and Peter pulls out his knife and cuts his ear off. Yeah. What's he doing? He's still showing how much he loves Jesus by disobeying exactly what Jesus told him not to do. He said, these things have to happen. I've got to suffer. Peter said, I'm not going to let it happen. And Jesus said, then you don't love me. You don't love God like you say you do. And he still lost his way. Not long after that. In the garden, he's still trying to prove how much he loves Jesus by being violent. Yeah. I'm going to beat somebody up to show him how much I love the Lord. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, we'll get indignant with people and cuss them out because they said something negative about my church. Oh. You ain't loving God by doing that. No. Had someone one time said something called me a name that was outside of my name uh -oh. and and uh, someone standing by said don't talk to the pastor like that that's not his name and the person made a smart aleck remark and said it again and they said say it one more time and I'll stab you uh -oh. I said whoa hey 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 you ain't proving your love to me by being violent. This is what Peter was doing. He, I'm trying to prove how much I love you by being bad. That's not showing love. That's not showing how much you appreciate God. So Jesus rebukes him, tells him, look, you don't, you don't love me like you think you do. You love the things of men. And so as a result, he turns around and, and, and he kind of gets him straight, but Peter ain't really straight. Hey Amen. Some of us still ain't straight. We're trying to get straight, but we're not straight. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We're trying to get there, but we're not there. Amen. Some of us are still savoring the things of men. We love our image. We love how people perceive us. And so we have to go out and buy the best clothes, the best shoes, the best purse. Amen. Now, I, I don't know what the best shoes are for men because I don't think I have enough money to even walk up in the store, let alone to go buy some. But I do know uh, a Dooney and Burke. I know that. Yeah. Amen. That's expensive. Oh, yeah. oh the sisters won't get all quiet now. Yeah. I know Coach. I know Louis Vuitton. Amen. I know about all of that. I got daughters. They educated me what the best is. Educated me how to find the serial number on it and all of that to prove that it's real and how you can tell a knockoff and all as if I care. You know, some of... Some, and, and some of us is walking around with tennis shoes that cost as much as a suit. All right. I don't want the sister to feel like I'm beating up on just them. Because we got some folks walking around with $350, $400 tennis shoes on. Tennis shoes. Somebody asked me one time, how come you don't buy no real good shoes? I said, because you don't do nothing but walk on them. Why in the world would I spend $250 for something that I'm going to take outside and then stomp on the ground with it? I'm not going to do that. I'm go buy me a $50 pair of shoes and some, some shoe polish. Save my money for something else. Some of us is so worried about image, though, we can't serve God because we got to have something. I'm not just making that up. I know somebody that backslid because they had to have new carpet in their house. They stopped coming to church 
got them another job, two jobs, just so they can have carpet in their house because they can't have no raggedy carpet. That's loving the things of this world. They, it was all about image to them. I don't want people coming to my house and seeing raggedy carpet. But when you want to serve God, the carpet don't matter. That's, when I first moved here, I lived in a raggedy house. Raggedy carpet. I wouldn't walk around in my bare feet on that carpet. And I didn't do that for a couple of months. I did that for a few years. I cleaned it the best I could. Furniture the best I could. I did what I could. I tried to cut my grass faithful. But cutting your grass don't make raggedy siding look better. Amen. Some of us so wrapped up in money, we can't do nothing for God. We love money. We're just all about money. I'm going to church because I'm waiting for him to speak a word of prophecy on my pocketbook. I'm, I'm going to go, and if the preacher ain't prophesying something good and telling me about how God's getting ready to open up the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing, I ain't going to that church. So-and-so's church, now they ain't really doing They moving. And just because somebody said God did something for him don't mean God did it. I heard him on the radio one time bragging, come on over to our church. We got a revival going and prophet so-and-so is over here and folks has been healed. We've had folks that was dead raised. I don't believe that. You ain't had no dead folks up in your church. People would leave. Here you come hauling a dead body up in the church. I don't think so. I don't believe that. They, oh, and God was healing. And, and then he, we had one man came up and he couldn't afford to go to the dentist. And the, the prophet prayed for him and, and God blessed him and, and gave him gold teeth. I don't believe that. God could give him porcelain teeth. God could give him real teeth. When the man that was blind and Jesus healed him, he didn't give him a, a fake eye that he could see through. He gave him a real eye. I don't believe it just because somebody says so. I believe what the Bible says. If God wants to do it, he'll do it. But I don't believe God does fake stuff like that. Some old hokey stuff. And, and other folks just run. Woo, I got to go. They doing something at that church. Yes, they are, but they're not doing what God told them to do. He said, woe unto the preachers that said, I have spoken and I have not spoken. whole lot of folks is telling what God has said and God hasn't said nothing. Got some folks so wrapped up in being important they can't go to church. Let me throw another example out there. I was with a preacher one time. He said, I don't really like going to Christ Temple Church because it looks like a poor person church. I need to go to a church where they got a brand new building and a whole lot of folks going because I hang out with bankers. Yeah. Amen. Well, I don't know what the brother's doing now. I really don't. But I know that's a wrong approach to God. If you got to be in a one-room building with a coal stove and three folks praising God, that's better than being in a church with 3,000 people that's faking about the, their love for God. Some folks don't want to serve God because the preacher told them they don't have to suffer and they're going through some problems. And if I'm going through some problems, that must mean there is no God. Well, I'm here to tell you, you're going to go through some things if you're going to serve the Lord. It don't matter what the preacher says. What matters is what the Bible says. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. You're going to go through some things. Not just one or two. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. The righteous are going to make themselves a prey. If you live right, the devil's coming after you. If you live right, your family is coming after you. If you live right, your friends is going to talk about you and come after you. You're not going to live right and everybody be happy with you because you're living right. Some people can't serve God because they love family too much. Well, if I get in church, it's going to hurt my family. If I go over and get the Holy Ghost, they're going to be mad at me because we don't believe in getting the Holy Ghost like them people believe in getting the Holy Ghost. Well, your family's not going to answer to God for you. One day you're going to have to explain to God why you live the kind of life that you live. And you're not going to be able to say, wait a minute, let me get my mama. Mama, come over here and explain to God why I didn't do what I did. 
Don't work like that. If you're going to serve God, you got to serve God for yourself. Tradition is not going to get you into heaven. Tradition doesn't make you right with God. And let me just be clear about this as far as tradition is concerned. Because I think sometimes as apostolic people, we cling to tradition like it's gospel. Sometimes tradition is just that, just tradition. Tradition don't get you into heaven. Tradition might make you feel good about yourself. But tradition is not what God is asking for. God said, be holy. If you can't do that, that's the minimum that he's looking for. If you can't do the minimum, you can't make it. Some folks come to church because they're trying to lift up their social life. They don't even believe in God, but they go to church because they know that other people do. It's like, a, what are you, you know, like if you're a member of an organization, you know, the, the sororities and fraternities and all that kind of stuff, you know, because it's going to get you a job. Well, the, the place that I want to work at, the owner goes to that church. So I'm going to go there and they fake like they're really in the church because they're trying to improve their social life. Yeah. Amen. They're trying to get ahead by using God as a tool. You can't use God as a tool. And let me just be clear, too, about this. You can't use God to get you a girlfriend or a boyfriend, either. You can't use God to get you a husband or a wife. You better get your own husband or your own wife. Make sure that they living right. Just because they go to church don't mean that they say. Just because somebody goes to church don't mean that their life is right with God. Get a hold of somebody that goes to church regular because they're trying to improve their social life. You marry them and be sorry the rest of your life. You know, messed your life up. Those are the things that, that Jesus is talking about. He said, you love the things of men. But if you want to be saved, you've got to start loving the things that I love. I love to see it when my people are struggling and still keep the victory. I love to see it when my people are standing upright when everybody else is laying down. I love to see it when they look, when people look at them and see that they've gone through some hardships and yet they're still clinging a hold of me. Amen. I know as a man, I have not been able to provide all the things I wanted to for my wife and children, but I'm sure grateful that they hung on even though we went through some hard times. I didn't make them go through that on purpose. I wasn't trying to make them struggle and suffer. But I do know this for a fact, that if they can stick with me through some hard times, let some good times hit, and I think we can make it through that too. If you can make it through the rough times with God, when the good times get here, you can still make it with God. Some folks can't have nothing and serve the Lord because God, they want it so fast that they can't mature in God. But if you stick in there and you hang in there, if you go through some problems after you have suffered a while, he will strengthen you. He will settle you. God will establish you after you've gone through some things. But if you don't love him like you say you should, you won't be able to make it through. Because the first time troubles hit, I'm hitting the road. Lord, I need you to help me to love you like I should. That ought to be my prayer every day. Lord, help me to love you right. I don't want to love you like the world. I want to love you like you want to be loved. Oh, no amen. Well, I, I, I'm preaching to me. I tell the Lord that. I do. I've been telling God that for a long time. Lord, I want to love you right. Because the way man teaches love is wrong. I remember when Tina Turner come out with a song, What's Love Got to Do With It? It's got everything to do with it. Everything. Because God is love. And if you can't love right, then you are all wrong. If you say you love God, then you should love like God loves. God loves those things that are good. God loves those things that are wholesome. God loves those things that are spiritual. God loves those things that are holy. God loves those things that are set apart for his use and his use only. Don't be mad because somebody wants to serve God. Don't be angry because somebody wants to spend a little extra time at the altar praying. Don't get upset and talk about how, look at them, they think they're so holy. Hey Amen, you get holy. Don't be mad because somebody wants to do a little extra. Because somebody wants to go above and beyond in their love for God. Amen.
I need to love God right. And if I'm depending on somebody to tell me how to love God, I'll never love him like I should. I need to read my Bible. Amen. Let me step on a couple of toes. I need to be faithful to church. Amen. God is talking to us through the preachers. Oh. All right. Don't think you're going to sit at home and just read your Bible and it's going to just fall all on you because that's not the truth. In Jeremiah, he said, I have given you pastors after my own heart who shall teach you knowledge and understanding. You can read the Bible, but you won't get a true understanding until you come to church and see how that applies to my life. Because your understanding may be wrong. But when God explains it, I can stand up here and talk about red and blue. But by the time the word gets to you, you hear green and purple. Oh, listen, I have people come up to me after church sometime. Woo, that message was right. It was just for me. I, you know, I said, oh, well, amen. I said, you know, when you was talking about and they start talking about something I didn't even say. But they heard it. Because you know what? When God begins to speak to you like that, it doesn't matter what the preacher is saying per se. He better be telling the truth. But there's times when that anointing changes so that by the time it gets to your ears, God is letting your heart open up and hear what he's saying to you. I'm, I'm, I'm not making that up. I'm telling you, there are times when people would tell me, just like when you said, and, and they'll come up with something. I'm like, wow, that's so different than what I was preaching about. Yeah. I was preaching about don't commit adultery, and they talking about stealing. Uh -huh. Like, what's that got to do with adultery? But yeah. God knows what we need to hear. Amen. You want to love God? He said this, forsaking not the assembling of ourselves together. As the manner of some is. Some folks feel like they can be saved at home. Watching the preacher on TV. Yeah. Having the CD mailed to their house. But that is not the way God works with us. God said come to church. Sit together with brothers and sisters. Listen to the word. Get your heart's affections where they should be. Come in and expect to feel the presence. Come in, come in, in anticipation of feeling my move in your life. Ooh, if you come to church looking for something, you'll find something. If you come to church because you just don't want folks to talk about you because you ain't here, you're going to go home just as empty as you got here. Yeah. But if I come yeah. in anticipation, Lord, I'm expecting to hear from you today. Yes, he said, ask and you shall receive. If I'm getting up, Lord, I'm getting ready to go to church. I want to hear something from you. I'm excited about hearing your word today. I'm asking you, Lord, when I get to church, let something be said that's going to stir up my mind, that's going to cause me to, to love you even more, that's going to cause me to want to run on just a little bit. Lord, when I get there, give me something. I can promise you, when you get here, you'll get something. Don't be mad when somebody scuffs your shoe walking in the door. Don't be mad because they held the door open to get in and they knew that you was right behind them and they just let go and let the door close and you had to reopen it for your own. Don't get mad over that. Amen. Still come here looking for something. Amen. The devil will let you see everything that should, that's going wrong. But if you block it all out and say, Lord, I don't care about none of that. I come here to get something from you. You will get something from God. Amen. So don't, don't, don't run around. I'm, I, I'm, I'm finished. Don't run around telling everybody how much you love God and, and how much you appreciate him and you're here for all the wrong reasons. Amen. There's another song. I don't even know who sang it. Looking for love in all the wrong places. Don't come here looking for the wrong stuff. If you want to love God, he'll tell you exactly how to love him. But if you come in here because you just don't want your mama to be sick no more, you come in for the wrong reason. Amen. If you're being faithful to church because you want God to heal your child, you're coming for the wrong reason. Amen. Amen. Anybody? Amen. Come here looking for something from God because the bottom line is this. God is fair. He is. And God will see to it that you get everything that you need. 
much as I love my wife, if she don't come to church, that ain't stopping me. I hope she got the same feeling. Amen. She does. I hope, I hope that God don't make her have to, to demonstrate that. No. If you love God, you don't let your children stop you from coming to church. You know, people today are saying we didn't come to church because I, I got up and I asked the kids if they wanted to go. And they said they really didn't want to go this morning. So we stayed home and went to McDonald's to the playland. I don't let my kids tell me how to serve God. Some folks will let their kids tell them how to love their husband or wife. Mm -mm. I know that after so many years, you're going to be gone and I'm still with them. So I ain't, I ain't studying you. Amen. I don't, let, I don't let nobody put no hang-ups on me on how to treat folks I love. Come on, amen. And I don't love just my wife and children. I, I, I love everybody. I don't know everybody. <laughs> amen. But I would do for anybody that I can. If I got the ability, I'm going to help somebody. Amen? Yeah. All right. And so let's make sure that we're looking for God's love and that we're asking him, Lord, teach me how to love you. Amen. Yeah. Is there anyone here today that wants to be saved? Amen. Stand on your feet. Elder Pompey, could you come and dismiss us, please? Amen. Can we put our hands together for the Lord, for the word of God on today? <laughs> Truly, God is good. Up with the hands. May the Lord watch between me and thee. When we are absent, one from the other. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.